Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Pastor John and Renee and other women who arranged uh, this conference for inviting us and giving us this great opportunity to share our story uh, with you. And uh, it's really a blessing and honor for both of us uh, whenever we share our story with people. And also, I would like to thank all of you for coming today to hear our story. Uh, as uh, she mentioned, we will share uh, part of our story that how we converted to Christianity and our prayer is that Holy Spirit uh, talk to your hearts uh, through our story it's not uh, about us it's all about God what he did in our lives and we hope that uh, we all have a blessed day today uh, actually it's almost uh, 15 years that I converted to uh, Christianity and uh, I remember from my childhood, I always loved God and wanted to find out more about his truth. And I did everything to get closer uh, to him. Uh, since I was born into a Muslim family, a Muslim country, my only means of getting to know God were religious teaching among the Muslims and at school. But I always, I remember, I al always, I had many questions that Islamic um, theology could not answer my questions. Uh, when uh, I remember I, when I was attending at school, I, I asked many questions from my uh, teachers, but they couldn't answer my questions. Uh, and also, I believe that, you know, um, the God who created us, uh, he's very close to us. Uh, I had a very close re relationship with my dad, and I loved him. Uh, I love him so much. And I always compare this relationship with uh, my relationship with God, and I, that's why I believe that the God who created me, uh, uh, he should be much closer than my uh, family members to me, and even much closer from my bone and flesh to, to my heart. And I couldn't believe the wrong beliefs that uh, exist in Islam, because in Islam they explain to us that God uh, is like a big king, uh, he's far from you, and you can't be close to him. If you do good things, he will uh, reward you. If you do uh, bad things, he will, uh, he will punish you. Uh, I can say in Islam, it's most about the punishment. And uh, that's why I couldn't ima imagine the face of God like this, to be a cruel king that all the time uh, he is punishing you. And also, I had many questions. I, and uh, for example, I, in Islam, uh, as a Muslim, you have to pray namaz uh, five times a day and bending in front of God and uh, repeating some Arabic words, which is not our language, Farsi. And I, I had uh, those questions, why I have to speak to my God in Arabic instead of my native language, Farsi? Doesn't this God cannot understand my mother tongue? <laughs> Why should I pray to him as if he's a great um, king or ruler over me? And why should I bending in front of him and repeating just some Arabic words? Why should I cover myself in front of uh, him like uh, I mean uh, hijab in Islam? Uh, uh, because I believe that he's uh, like my dad. He's closer than my dad. And uh, I had many questions like this in my mind. And the answer I was getting at school uh, were not convinc convincing. Because uh, in our school, they explained that uh, I, I mentioned uh, that you can't have a close relationship with him. And uh, despite all these questions and all these reservations, uh, I still did my best to follow my religious duties because I told myself I may be wrong and maybe I need to do uh, Islamic, to follow Islamic rules and to pray namaz uh, in order to be close uh, to God. I always try to experience, you know, to try something to, to see what happened. And that's why I started uh, reading uh, Quran. Uh, I started praying namaz for two years and reading Quran and other Islamic books. Uh, I wanted to see what happened. And, but I can say, uh, you know, um, all those things uh, just was rule that I was practicing some uh, rules. And they were not making me feel any closer to my God. On the contrary, they were distancing me further from him as they had become a routine action that I just... Uh, uh, was forced to do, not I wanted to do. 
And I remember I was uh, around 17 uh, for the first time. Uh, God spoke to me through one of my dreams. And uh, he, in that dream, he revealed the real um, face of Muslims. And also he revealed uh, his love to me. Uh, in that dream, I remember I was uh, praying to the sky and... Um, uh, and suddenly sky, the sky opened and a white horse came down and uh, he started speaking to, me, uh, speaking to me. And he told me, um, sit on my back. When I obe obeyed the horse, uh, he took me to a city that uh, uh, people uh, were just uh, coming out of a mosque. They were practicing Islamic rules. Uh, there are some, uh, you know, um, famous uh, Islamic rules that in Iran uh, it calls Ashura Tasua, and they were practicing these uh, Islamic rules. Uh, and uh, at first they couldn't see me or the horse, but suddenly uh, the Muslim worshippers revealed as wild animals with savage features. And as soon as I saw them, they I, I was surprised because uh, they were. Uh, you know, practicing Islamic rules. They were worshiping uh, God in the mosque. And uh, as soon as I saw them, they could see me and they uh, tried to kill me. So the horse ran like the wind to save me uh, from those people. And I remember as I uh, held its neck because it was running and I felt its love pouring into me with a power and purity I had never known. And um, after we're safe, uh, the horse took me to a road, and that road uh, goes to the sky, and I awoke. Uh, I remember when I awoke, uh, I couldn't explain how much love God let me touch in that dream through that horse. And I taste the love of God in that dream, and I couldn't compare this love with any love in the world, even between family members or two lovers. It was amazing. I can't explain it for you. And uh, just I remember for one week, every night I was crying, and I wanted to be that dream in that dream forever because I taste uh, a little of uh, you know love of God. And after that dream, at that time I didn't know anything about Jesus, and. That's why I decided to put aside my religion duties and came to the conclusion that the most important uh, part of being a believer is just my heart. Then I began to speak to my God, uh, to pray to him uh, with my language Farsi uh, in the way of a relationship uh, like a father and a child. And uh, uh, after that, uh, one day one of my friends who has converted to Christianity some years ago, and she talked to me about uh, Jesus for the first time. And uh, she told me that Jesus is the Son of God uh, who has come to this earth for freedom uh, from their sins. When I heard uh, such a thing for the first time, I became very, you know, curious because I hadn't heard anything like that about Jesus. Uh, because I used to think he was just uh, also another prophet as he had been introduced to us in our textbooks uh, at school. So I told myself, uh, how do I know Jesus is the truth? I don't know anything about other religions. Maybe I need to do some research about other uh, religions. And just I took the Bible from her, and I started reading the uh, Bible. And at the same time, I started uh, reading other uh, you know, religion, uh, religious books. Uh, but after a while, I realized that there are many religions in this world. And if I want to spend time to do research about other religions, uh, maybe I need to spend all my life do research about di different religions. And that's why I was confusing. What is the truth in this world? And that's why one day I just... I became so tired and disappointed. I just knelt and prayed and asked God uh, mm, to show me the truth. I told him, God, if Jesus is the truth, you must guide me to the right path and save me from being misguided because I don't know what is the truth in this world. And everyone says something. Uh, so please help me to find the truth and um, help me to not being uh, misguided. And after that prayer, I... I had several experiences. Some miracles happened to my life. For example, I was invited um, with my friend that uh, talked to me about Jesus to a church. 
uh, I mean, uh, 15 years ago, uh, there was an official church in Iran that uh, people from Muslim background could attend in that church. And she, uh, in, but unfortunately today, uh, even the Iranian government even closed this church. And there is no official church that m Muslim uh, could attend and to listen to uh, the speech. Uh, and at that time, when I attended uh, in that church for the first time, uh, I had a medical appointment with a specialist. I had a bad disease at that time. And um, when people started worshiping, it was very interesting for me that they were, uh, you know, worshiping in God in their words, not another language, with their language. And uh, it was amazing for me, you know. And during the worship, uh, suddenly I heard a voice of God uh, that told me, Marzi, you are healed. And uh, when I was uh, hearing this voice, uh, I didn't want to, you know, I thought maybe I became emotional, people are worshiping, and I didn't want to be emotional. And that's why I tried to ignore this voice and not listen to this voice. But this voice was very powerful and was repeating a lot. And that's why I couldn't ignore it. And I, I was telling myself, what is this? And why I hear such a voice? And I told my friend, um, I'm, I'm hearing uh, uh, somebody tell me so, uh, uh, that I, you are healed. And she explained to me that, Marzia, uh, this is uh, uh, Jesus, and he can heal you. He had healed me, but um, you know, um, still I had some doubts. Uh, and uh, in the afternoon, I had a medical uh, appointment with a doctor. And I, I, I went to medical appointment to my doctor of, uh, office. And I remember uh, he was supposed to, to write my prescription. And um, he, after asking many questions, he knew about my background. And he started writing the prescription. He took his pen. But suddenly, he put down his pen and told me that, um, Miss Amirzada, I don't know why, but I can't write anything for you. Would you please go and come back another time? And I was surprised, too, what happened to him. <laughs> why he, he doesn't want to write anything for me. And I wanted to insist him, please write something for me. <laughs> But God reminded me his message in the church and told me, trust me, you are healed. <laughs> and that's why I left uh, his office and he really healed me and uh, I didn't have any symptom again, praise God. Uh, but still, you know, he had healed me, but still I had some doubts about him. I can say I had um, began to believe in Jesus in my heart and... But still, I had some doubts about the Bible, um, for example, about Holy Spirit, about praying in tongues and other things, and I couldn't understand it. I, I believed in Jesus at that time. But um, I didn't want to have any doubts about Jesus. And that's why I asked God, please show me more reason about yourself, because I don't want to have any doubts about you. And praying in tongues, for example, was something that I thought it's impossible, it's not true. And uh, I remember one day I was alone at my home and I was praying and suddenly I received the flames of Holy Spirit and I began to pray in tongues. I didn't know what had happened to me, I didn't know the meaning of my words, but could fully understand what I was telling to my God. And it was the first time ever in my life that I was so close to him and could touch him. And I remember while uh, I was uh, praying, uh, I was crying, and uh, for a few, uh, a few seconds, I saw Jesus in front of me. He was standing next to a large throne, which was covering with shining gold. And I believe at that time, I wasn't on the earth. And the, um, you know, the middle of my forehead uh, was burning, as thought someone had branded it. And uh, at that time, all my doubts disappeared. And I felt that God had removed the curtain before my eyes. And that's why I could see the truth very clear without any doubts. And I just, I was crying and I was uh, singing um, some songs for him. And I couldn't stop my tongue. It wasn't on my control. It was completely in his control. And uh, I just kept praying and singing 
the songs of prize nonstop through the night until the early hours of the following day. And uh, I, I remember it was tw uh, uh, 12 at night, and uh, I, I couldn't stop my tongue. And at that time, I could hear my voice. I don't have a good voice uh, to sing, believe me. <laughs> but at that time, I was singing. It was like I could hear my voice. It was like opera for singing for him, <laughs> and I couldn't stop my tongue. And it was amazing, and uh, my jaws were in pain, but I couldn't stop it. I was, um, you know, enjoying, and as I, sometimes I tell people, it was like a, a spiritual lovemaking that <laughs> I didn't want to end. And by about uh, four in the morning, my tongue uh, stopped praying, uh, but I can say what had happened to me was so incredible that I couldn't describe it to anybody. Uh, you have this, I'm sure, those people who had such an experience, you can uh, understand me, that even you explain to other people who are not believers, they can't uh, believe such a thing. And uh, I couldn't explain such a thing to anybody, what, hap what had happened to me. And that's why, you know, from that day on, I dedicated all my life to Jesus. And during that time, I was uh, living alone uh, and for some years, and... Uh, I had other dreams, other miracles happen to my life, and I had many experiences with uh, Jesus. And I can say, you know, uh, I learned how to walk with, the, uh, with God, how to live with Him, uh, and He teach me every day. It wasn't uh, like uh, attending, um, you know, normal uh, in a church and uh, teaching, uh, learning in, uh, through church. Uh, he was teaching me every day. And uh, he built uh, my faith. And um, from that day on, you know, I dedicated my life to him and spent many uh, uh, years of difficulties. And through all difficulties, you know, he uh, teach me, he taught me, and uh, he built, uh, uh, built my faith. And uh, I remember after, uh, you know, I gave my heart to Jesus, I had so much passion uh, to, to share this message with other people because I tasted the love of God and I wanted to give this love to other people and also at that time I was uh, working in a beauty salon as a manager and trainer uh, for training a new hairdresser and uh, God gave me this opportunity to share this uh, message with many women every day and I really praise God for this opportunity because I had so much passion to give this message to other uh, people but after uh, a while, uh, I decided to quit my job uh, because I wanted to follow uh, Jesus. I, I, I was in love with him. I wanted to um, give all my time to him. And uh, some of my friends uh, were surprised and they told me, Marzia, you are a crazy person because uh, for many years you have worked so much hard and now you are very successful. And now you want to quit everything. What happened to you? And even I explained to, the, to them, but they couldn't understand uh, what really happened to me. I was in love, and I wanted to follow him and to serve him. And uh, I talked to one of my friends uh, who was a pastor, and he knew about uh, my passion. And he um, advised me to go to London uh, for studying theology courses because in Iran it wasn't um, it was impossible uh, and I, I mentioned that there there was just one official church but they couldn't teach uh, taught, teach you about theology and that's why I had to travel to um, uh, but at that time um, I was supposed to travel to uh, London but um, it wasn't it was very difficult to get a visa and that's why I had to travel to Turkey instead of London. Um, there were some organization, Christian organization, that they held some, uh, you know, uh, conferences and uh, uh, courses for theology. That's why I traveled. It was easier for Iranian to travel to Turkey. We don't, uh, we don't have uh, have to take a visa for traveling to Turkey. That's why I traveled to Turkey uh, in 2005 uh, for studying theology courses. Uh, where I met Mariam for the first time in Turkey. Thank you for listening. Praise the Lord. Good morning. I also would like to thank each one of you for coming um, to listen to our stories. Um, it's really a blessing, as Marzia mentioned, for both of us 
to go to different churches, different places, and share what the Lord has done in our lives. Because um, it's, we believe it's a great uh, pleasure for us to be able to share about God's works and God's miracles. Um, and it's been almost um, 15 years, 15, 16 years that I also converted to Christianity. But um, at that time, we didn't know each other. It's just um, about 10 years that we are friends and we know each other. But I also remember since I was a young child, I always sought to learn more about God and build a more personal relationship with him. You know, my heart and my soul were always thirsty for the truths and for knowing God. And all my family members were aware of the love and passion that I had for him. But as you know, I'm from Iran, an Islamic country, where religious laws and regulations always stop people from knowing the truths. And it starts exactly from childhood. For example, at the schools, students were forced to read the Quran or other Islamic books or pray namaz that is in Arabic, as Marzia mentioned. And I remember all I, all I was told about Jesus in that young age was that he was just a prophet of love and peace, nothing more. Because in Quran, um, there are some verses that mention to the story of um, Mary and uh, the birth of Jesus, but they, they tried to show people that Jesus was just a prophet, and he was known to a prophet of love and peace, nothing more. And they don't believe that Jesus was crucified. And, um, but I remember, you know, I had so many questions in my mind. Um, when I was listening to Marzi, I was thinking that, you know, many people in Iran have this struggle. They have these questions because they, the government just try to force people to follow some religious rules, some Islamic rules. And they do not allow people to, to search about other religion or even read other books about other religions. Everything is prohibited in Iran. You just have the Quran and you have to follow these religious rules. And it's just not about um, you know, the childhood or being at the schools and receiving these wrong teachings. Every day you have these uh, struggles, for example, at workplace, at universities. Everywhere you go, you have to show that you are a religious Muslim. You have to show or prove that you are um, you know, a dedicated Muslim and practicing Islamic rules. Otherwise, you will lose your benefits. Um, but I remember you know, from a very young age, I had these questions in my mind about Islam, about its roots and about the God that was introduced to us in Islam. Like Marzi, I had never understood why I had to talk to my God in Arabic, because I didn't know Arabic. I just learned a few Arabic words at the school, but we were forced to repeat the same Arabic words every day, and it didn't make any sense to me, because you know, in a normal relationship, when you have a relationship with someone, every day you tell new words to each other, and it's, it's it, it can be tiring to, to repeat the same words every day, even if, it's, even if those words are very beautiful. But it didn't make any sense to me to repeat the same Arabic words every day in order to have relationship with God. But I remember I was so eager to find the truth. Um, so I tried to study and do some researches on other religions. I read Persian translation of the Quran and some other books of other religions. Sometimes I prayed namaz, Islamic prayers. And also I attended meetings of other religions from time to time. There were some, some different branches of Islam in Iran that they were allowed to have meetings. They were kind of, you know, they were Muslims, but they were kind of moderate Muslims. They had different meetings. I, I attended some of those meetings. but. After a while, you know, I, I became tired. And I remember um, when I was 16, 17, I, I was so disappointed. And I thought it would be better not to follow any religion. Because none of those efforts for, you know, finding the truth could really help me and quench my thirst. So I tried to stop doing researches completely. Um, and, you know, because I was tired of those meaningless rules, which were just about religious laws. And I was tired of the God who was so far away, and I couldn't hear his voice. I remember I had always longed for two-way communication with him. I wanted to hear his voice. I wanted to touch him. But it was just me talking to him, talking to him, but I couldn't hear his voice. And it was very disappointing for me. So um, eventually, I stopped doing researches completely. Just whenever I was alone, especially at nights, I would look up into the sky and ask God to reveal himself to me and speak to me. 
I remember there were times that I would talk to him in my own language, Farsi, for one or two hours, and I really enjoyed that relationship with him. You know, at that time, I didn't know why I was so thirsty for, for having relationship with him, for finding the truths about him. But later, when I came to Christianity, I realized that it too was a desire that God himself had created in my heart. Because I believe, you know, when you're looking for the truth, when you want to have real relationship with God, he has many different ways to reveal himself to you. He has many different ways to show the truth to you. As the Bible says, you know, seek and you will find. I, I really believe in this verse that if you are really have this passion in your heart to know the truth about God, he will reveal himself to you in, in, in amazing ways that you can't imagine. And that his ways are different. For I believe for each one of us, he has a different way to approach us and to teach us and to, to reveal the truth to us. For me, I remember one day, um, you know, I, I received a little booklet. Um, it was just a part of Book of Luke, and the title of the book was His Name is Wonderful. I received that booklet from my sister. As I mentioned, um, all my family members knew that I was searching to know God, and I wanted to uh, find the truth about him. And my sister knew that I would read, read any book that would help me in that regard. She, 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 one day she came home, and she gave me that little booklet, and she said that she, she had received it from a man of the church near her university. Um, it was the same church that Marzi mentioned. At that time, there was just one building church that people could attend. And one day, when she was returning from her university, just um, a, a man gave him that little booklet. Um, I remember when she gave me that little booklet, she told me, read it, but don't read the last page, because it's a conversion prayer for those people who want to become a Christian. You know, my, um, <laughs> my sister, it was... It was interesting because my sister was not a religious Muslim, um, like the rest of my family members. Um, I can say like most of Iranians, because Islam is different in Iran than other Islamic countries like Afghanistan or Pakistan. People in those countries are real Muslim. They are, they are practicing Islam. But most people in Iran are not religious Muslim. They are just born as a Muslim. And because um, I don't know how much you know about Iran and uh, the history of Iran, Iran was not an Islamic country. Islam was, was forced to our country. That's why most people do not practice Islamic rules. They are just born as a Muslim, and they, uh, they try to show that they are Muslim, but they don't know anything about Islam. If you ask them a question about Quran, they, can, they may not be able to answer you. And I was raised in, this, um, in, uh, in a family you know, who were just born as a Muslim. And I was surprised because my sister was not religious and he, she wasn't practicing Islam. But she told me that she had read that little booklet in the way back home. And she had some doubts about the way that, you know, Bible introduces Jesus as the son of God, which is totally different from teachings of the Quran that um, says that Jesus was just a prophet. That's why she told me, she asked me not to read that last page. At that time, you know, I was so exhausted from searching for the truth. And I almost lost my hope for it. I just took the booklet from her. I said, don't worry. I went to my room right away. And I started reading that little booklet. You know, I can say from the first page, I could feel that my heart was deeply moved. I started crying because I, I, I could feel the presence of God in my room and right in front of me. And I could, I could see that Jesus was speaking to me through the words of that, that little booklet. It was just about 20, 30 pages. But when I was reading, I felt as if I had already known and heard of all those words in that book and had just found what I had lost for many years. That was the love of Christ. You know, I, um, before that, you know, I always felt a barrier between me and God. And I, I could feel that, you know, there is something uh, between us. He can't hear me. I can't hear him. But when, when I read the Bible um, uh, and I read about Jesus and the work that he did on the cross for our sins, I said to myself, this is exactly what I had been looking for years and years. Love without terms, God's grace. And, you know, the, the, the work that Jesus did on the cross for our sins, that the salvation, everything was, you know, about the grace. Everything was so new to me. And when I was reading those words, I could feel and I could understand and and I, I tell people that uh, it wasn't just 
for me, it wasn't just reading those words in the book. I believe that in, in that day, Jesus himself revealed and witnessed to me the good news of salvation through reading those words, through reading that little booklet. And he was the one who gave me this gift of salvation. And, uh, you know, because at that time I, had, um, I, I didn't have any Christian friend. I didn't know anything about Christianity. I, I hadn't gone to a church. I didn't know anything. And I just, um, but it was interesting because when I was reading that booklet, I felt, you know, um, none of those words in the book sounded strange or unbelievable to me. Even when I read that Jesus is the Son of God and He is God, I knew this in my heart and I could accept it. And I remember, you know, after two or three hours being in my room reading that little booklet, I felt, you know, I had already known Jesus and I just found my lost one. And when I got to the last page of the booklet, I prayed the written prayer and I gave my heart to Jesus without any doubt or second thought because it was the first time in my life that I could hear his voice and it was the first time in my life that I could touch his spirit, I could feel him, I could see that he was so close to me and he cared about me and he was speaking to me, you know, as as individual, not just, um, you know, because in Islam they tell you that you're not worthy and God just, the, the word of God is in Quran and everything that you need is in the Quran and so you can't have a close relationship with God and you can't have everyday relationship with him. I remember the first day that I went to the church um, I was introduced to the pastor, and he, he advised me to go to the church. He had asked me to read the whole Bible. And I remember the first day that I was in the church, um, he, the pastor introduced me to a woman in the church and asked that woman to pray for me. Uh, I remember before that woman started praying, she asked me a question. She told me, Mariam, are you ready to give all you have to Jesus? Are you ready to um, die, suffer or even die for him? You know, when you go to a church for, for the first day, it was a weird question. <laughs> and I was thinking that, am I going to die? <laughs> but, you know, I had no idea what Christianity was. I had no idea what suffering was. I remember I just said yes immediately because I just tasted the love of Jesus. And I, I felt his presence. And I, 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 t I thought that I was ready to do anything for that. And later, I started going to that woman's house. He start, she started teaching me Bible lessons. And um, for, I remember for two days, I would go to her house, and she would teach me about Bible. And one day, when I, I was in her house, she was talking to me about um, Holy Spirit, and she was teaching me about speaking in tongues. After, after the teaching, usually, I, I usually I, we would pray together, and I would ask my questions. And I remember... I, after she, she finished uh, teaching me, I immediately asked her, so can I have this gift? She told me, yes, it's possible. You can pray and ask God, and he can give you this gift. And I told her, so can we pray now? Um, I want to have this gift now. You know, I was so <laughs> eager to, I was so passionate to have that gift. And we prayed together. I was in her house, and I, was, I remember I was so passionate, and I was so interested to have this gift. We prayed together, but nothing happened. And I was, you know, my heart was broken. I was so sad. And when I was leaving her house in the way to back to my home, all the way I was crying and I was thinking, oh, what happened? Was it, you know, something wrong with me? Or I didn't know what happened and why I hadn't received that gift. And then I went back home. Um, but at night, before sleeping, again, I knelt and I wanted just to pray and um, to, to, to do my, you know, regular worship. And uh, suddenly I received the baptize of the Holy Spirit and I, I started speaking in tongues, which was a huge gift. Uh, and uh, it was a, you know, it was an amazing night for me. And later I told her that, you know, I had this amazing experience when I was alone in my room again. And it was, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a blessing to share this because, you know, in here in the U.S., People have many opportunities to hear about Jesus. They, they have many opportunities to read the Bible. But in our country, um, you know, we are like examples like Marcy and I, we didn't have access to Bible. We didn't know anything about Christianity. Even the government tried to, you know, put pressure on us and to force us to follow Islamic rules. But because I believe because we had this passion in our heart to know the truths, to find the truths about the real God, 
God spoke to us and um, he revealed himself to us. And also he let us experience him. He let us uh, touch his love and he let us share this love with other people. I remember after I witnessed to my family members, I started talking to strangers because when you taste the love of God, you can't stop talking about him. I remember everywhere um, I, I, I went, like, you know, at the schools, um, in subways, everywhere I would speak to people and talk to them about Jesus. I was so passionate. I wanted to share this message to, to more people. And um, that's why um, I would take people, you know, I would talk to people about Jesus and take them to the church. And they were worried, you know, because they had to be careful. There, there was a um, government building in front of the church and they would watch everything, every activities that uh, the church would, uh, would have done. And that's why uh, the church, uh, some pastors in the church advised me to go to Turkey because they could see that I had so much passion to share the message of salvation with other people. That's why I decided to go to Turkey and uh, I met Marzi for the first time there. We studied theology courses together. <laughs>